So welcome to this uh, webinar series on uh, ingestion by data torrent. My name is Devendra and today I will be presenting the app template for database to HDFS. And uh, I will also show some real-time dashboards for this app template. So before we begin, here are some logistics about this webinar. So this webinar is being recorded and video re recording will be uploaded on YouTube and slides will be uploaded on SlideShares and uh, link for the same will be posted on the Meetup channel. If you have any questions, you can type them in, in the uh, questions panel and we will be happy to answer them uh, as and when they come. And, uh, in between, I will wait for a uh, break for questions uh, at some logical points, and uh, we will take a detailed Q&A session at the end. So feel free to type in your questions at any point in time. So let's start. So today, we, I will be covering, uh, first I will uh, about the vision for data torrent and then uh, about uh, Apache Apex project and then we'll look at uh, why are we building this uh, app templates and what is uh, there in these app templates and then the main focus for today's presentation that is uh, database to HDFS app template so we will also show the live demo for this particular app template and I will show some real-time dashboards for this app template. And uh, at the end, we will present a roadmap that is uh, up upcoming features and uh, upcoming app templates in few months down the line. Let's start. So if the vision for data torrent is uh, mainly to productize big data. So by that, what we mean is, uh, you know, if we look at the big data ecosystem, as of now, we'll see that uh, there are many different projects uh, coming up uh, into the ecosystem, and ecosystem is as such uh, evolving. But what we have observed is there are uh, very few use cases which are actually uh, running into the production. And uh, so there is a potential to you know, migrate a lot many use cases from the traditional software systems to big data ecosystem. And for that, what we need is to productize big data, make it easy for the end users to adopt big data and uh, use it in the production environments and uh, operationalize it so that maintaining those production environments become easy. So our value proposition is to reduce the total cost of ownership. And uh, it includes mainly the time to develop your application, time to launch the application, and uh, also the cost associated with maintaining your production application. So the operational cost. And what we have observed is typically in the big data projects, the operational cost is uh, you know 80% of the effort is spent in the operational aspect of the use case rather than the functional aspect by that what I mean is suppose you are uh, dealing with some use case which is copying data from some source to some destination then the functionality as such can be developed in let's say a week or so or few weeks or so but the factors like uh, fault tolerance or scalability or maintaining the state of the application. So these are the factors which involves, uh, you know, 80% of the time. And this is what I mean by the operational aspect of the use case. And Data Torrent RTS or the Apache Apex platform is mainly built to target these operational aspects in your big data use cases. So our main focus is to provide product which will help you to build the application rapidly 
because we have uh, pre-built operators available with our platform which you can which are ready to use so you can just teach the operators and build your applications also we provide pre-built application for the frequently used uh, patterns and this in turn helps you to you know code reuse so you don't have to write code from scratch you can build on top of existing pre-built applications and our environment will give you features for monitoring your application, debugging your application, correcting logs and so on. So in all this platform will help your team in the development cycle, in the test cycle as well as in the production cycles and thus it reduces the end-to-end -end time to launch your application into the production. And after your application is into the production, you can use management and visualize uh, features of data torrent RTS for the operational aspect, like monitoring if something is going wrong. So let's dig into the details. So here is uh, one sample use case, which we can say, uh, which we have observed uh, as a typical pattern in many of our customers. So typically what happens is uh, you get some data from some source, it could be let's say web server logs or some application logs or some data from database or something like that. And then, you know, then we have something called as uh, delivery layer, message delivery layer. So in this case, it is uh, shown as Kafka, but it could be, you know, uh, either file system or you know storage element like uh, S3 or message pests such as RapidMQ or Kafka, or Solace, and then we need to connect to these message delivery systems get the information and uh, process that information. So in processing, we might need to pass the information, uh, pass the records and get the individual fields and then do some custom transformations or computation on those fields or do some filtering, aggregation, dimension computation and stuff like that. So finally, we write the summarized results of these operations onto some store. So again, it could be either message bus like Kafka, or it could be NoSQL databases or traditional databases or uh, HDFS or Hive. So basically any store which we will use for uh, downstream processing. So if we look at this end-to-end -end use case, we will observe mainly the four important components. The first component is uh, for connecting to the sources and to the sinks. So we have a very rich library of pre-built operators for connecting to very popular uh, sources as well as sinks. So we have support for Kafka, file system, and uh, social media like Twitter, or databases, NoSQL databases, and stuff like that. And then we need some processing part. So Apache Apex provides you the in-memory processing. And this is a truly streaming fashion. So there is no micro batch involved in this. So you can say that the incoming tuple will get processed as soon as it arrives. It supports both bounded as well as unbounded data sets. So we can say that uh, Apache Apex or the data torrent RTS can unify, is the unified Indian processing streams as well as batch jobs. And then, you know, for uh, applications like aggregations or dimension computation, we, need, we can maintain the states like uh, the per window matrix or the siding window matrix and stuff like that. So all these 
are available out of the box by the platform. So application developer doesn't have to write any code for handling these cases. So in other words, if we want to uh, look at how where the data torrent fits in, here is the diagram. So we have data sources like uh, sensor data from IoT devices or your click streams or uh, social media feeds or web servers or application servers. So data generated by these sources is getting collected into uh, any one of these. It could be like file systems or uh, databases or message bus like Kafka or Rapidum MQ or some storage like Amazon S3 or Plume for log collection. And then we are using Apex for doing custom processing of this data. So Data Torrent RTS is built on top of Apache Apex, which is uh, open sourced uh, under Apache. And Apex in turn runs on Hadoop. So it's a Hadoop native app engine. So it requires uh, just uh, YAN and HDFS from Hadoop. And uh, it can run on any uh, distribution of Hadoop. So we are vendor agnostic in that sense. So you can choose any Hadoop distribution of your choice for running Apache Apex. And uh, Data Torrent RTS is uh, you know, just value addition features on top of Apache Apex. So finally, your uh, application, which is developed by the application developer, is running on top of this Apache Apex engine. And in, it will involve some operators. So these operators will be available from the library. And application developer will just connect those operators and uh, create the directed or cyclic graph for that particular application. The output generated by your application can be fed to the real-time dashboards for monitoring purpose and also it can be fed to the stores. So traditional stores what we have observed in the past are uh, S3 or databases or NoSQL databases or file queries or Hadoop SDFs. And then you can use your favorite uh, you know, visualization tool for querying data from these tools and generating reports or custom dashboards. So maybe I will wait for uh, questions. So let's take uh, if we have uh, any major questions as such at this point in time. Okay, so there are no major questions uh, right now. So let's move forward. Yeah, so the question says that uh, it means that data torrent helps to create real time analytics from various data sources. And the uh, answer is yes. So you can develop your own uh, applications using the operators provided by data torrent. And that will help you to develop the application which can do real time analytics on various data sources. So here is the overall architecture. So sorry, there is one more question. So uh, the question says that how is it different from a Microsoft Power BI? OK, so maybe I'm not the best person to answer this because I don't have uh, any idea about uh, Microsoft Power BI. but uh, if uh, I think uh, it could be uh, more closer to Informatica also. In that case, I would say that uh, so I would say that this is uh, so one major difference is that Microsoft is uh, you know it is not the open source platform, and so there will be vendor locking associated with the platform. And also you need to check if it is a scale out architecture or scale up architecture. So uh, 
when we uh, talk about Hadoop ecosystem, mainly it deals with uh, scale out architecture, which means that you connect multiple machines of uh, commodity hardware to process the big data. Whereas generally these uh, large vendors go for uh, you know big appliances to serve the big data needs. So I'm not sure whether Microsoft Power BI is uh, following the scale up or not, but uh, that would help you to you know, dig more information about this. Okay, thanks Ashok. So uh, let's move on to the architecture part. So at the very bottom, you can see that uh, Hadoop 2.x, which means that we need uh, some Hadoop distribution installed on your cluster. And uh, it's uh, any version about 2.0 is fine for us, because uh, what we need is YARN and HDFS. So on top of YARN and HDFS, it runs uh, Apache Apex Core Engine. Uh, which is a uh, runtime environment and uh, which is responsible for handling uh, fault tolerance, uh, scalability, and maintaining your application master and stuff like that. So this uh, Apache Apex Core Engine, they talk to YARN to get the resources and uh, schedule your application. So in some sense, if we want to give uh, analogy, we can say that uh, Hadoop uh, is uh, equivalent to OS in our normal terms, and uh, you know, Apex Core could be equivalent to you know, uh, runtime in you know, JVM or whatever, on which your applications will run. Okay. So on top of Apex Core, we have uh, Apex Malhar library, which is uh, library of uh, pre-built operators for uh, frequently used use cases. So it will cover use cases like uh, custom transformations and uh, connectors to different sources and destinations and uh, stuff like uh, machine learning and uh, machine scoring or uh, stuff like uh, connecting to SQL or uh, defining your own DAG which will uh, work like a query or you know custom analytics so all these uh, so analytics I mean uh, aggregation or dimension computation and stuff like that so all these are available under uh, Apex Malar library which is also open sourced under Apache it also provides you uh, high level APIs so basically uh, Apache Apex gives uh, compositional APIs which are uh, traditionally uh, Java syntax where you define uh, your directed or cyclic graph by defining respective uh, nodes that is vertices of the graph and uh, edges like the streams connecting the vertices or you can also use the high level API which is a declarative API and which is uh, you can say uh, closer to the spark APIs and uh, yeah, so it also supports batch. So instead of uh, continuous uh, incoming data, if you have batch data, you can as well use that data with batch Apex. So this is the core platform. So uh, and uh, Apex Malla library, which is part of the open source Apache Apex project. On top of it, we have uh, application templates, which are pre-built uh, applications uh, based on the frequently observed patterns in the customer use cases. And these are developed so that uh, you don't have to start your applications from scratch. You can start on top of something which is uh, already working. So you can look at the source code of these app templates, customize these app templates to suit your requirements and launch your applications. So source code for these app templates is uh, available on GitHub and uh, I will share the link for the same. On top of this platform, we have a data torrent uh, 
IKS, which is a proprietary software. But uh, we have a community edition of that software, which is free to use. And we also give uh, uh, special licenses for startups, uh, which is uh, you know free license for one year with uh, all the enterprise features. So enterprise features include uh, GUI application assembly, which means drag and drop uh, user interface for building your applications, and uh, management and monitoring console to monitor the state of your applications, and real-time data visualizations, which is nothing but uh, dashboard. And we are also building some uh, ready-made solutions uh, to handle uh, injection use cases and uh, ETL pipelines. Any questions at this point? Okay, so one of the question uh, is uh, based on this architecture, can you classify or explain who can work which area, for example, developer, administrator, etc. Okay, so uh, yeah. So uh, let's say if you are the application developer, then uh, your main task will be, you know, to use these operators from the Malna library and build your application. So you can refer to the application templates in this layer and customize them. So let's say instead of Kafka to HDFS, suppose you are reading from uh, Solace instead of Kafka, then replace this Kafka input uh, connector in this particular app template with uh, Solace input operator and uh, use that app template and take it forward. So let's say instead if you are uh, somewhere on the admin, then you can uh, use this uh, management consoles or you can use the uh, REST APIs provided by this uh, engine and build your own dashboard based on the, those uh, REST APIs. Okay, so let's move on to what are the uh, app templates. So these are based on the recurring patterns which we have observed uh, in our customers' uh, use cases. So mainly what we have observed is uh, there are needs like uh, data synchronization. So it could be either for uh, disaster recovery or for uh, archival. So in that case, you know, there will be some source and something and you just need to copy the data from source to destination without any modifications or it could be like uh, you know before writing to destination we need to enrich the data for example incoming data might say that uh, I have customer ID transaction ID and amount and uh, we want to enrich that based on the customer ID maybe we want to include some more information about the customer saying that whether uh, the customer belongs to, uh, you know, premium customer or classic customer or uh, what is the contact number for the customer. So for that we might uh, uh, need to do some uh, table lookup. So all that is covered under the enrichment. And finally we uh, write the enriched data to the same. Or other use case could be merge and transform data streams. So we have uh, multiple data streams coming uh, in and we want to join them or merge them into the single stream and then transform it and write it to some destination. Or other use case could be machine scoring. So let's say you have uh, some model which is trained based on your historical data and we, uh, you use uh, something like uh, H2O or DATO and uh, finally you have some statistical model which is uh, suitably trained based on your past uh, data. And now you want to refer to that model 
and score the fresh tuples, uh, fresh incoming tuples to score them. So let's say if you are getting some known applications and we want to, uh, you know, score the applications and uh, annotate them based on whether the, uh, that customer uh, is uh, eligible for loan or not. Or it could be like, uh, you know, you train for uh, credit card fraud transactions and then for fresh incoming transactions, you uh, annotate them saying that whether it is fraudulent or not. So uh, we have captured these uh, recurring patterns and we are trying to develop uh, ready to use uh, customizable app templates for these recurring patterns. So for this app templates, we have uh, one uh, common repository of the app templates and we are calling it as a app hub. So if you have uh, installed data torrent RTS, you will see app hub tab available in um, the RTS uh, installation where you will see the collection of all the app templates. Or the other entry point could be you can just uh, go to datatorrent.com slash app hub and on that you will see the list of these applications and you can choose uh, your uh, favorite uh, or you can say the app template of your choice and there you will see the download button for the app template and if you download that then it will also download the data torrent RTS and then you can install it uh, in your local environment and uh, once you have data torrent RTS in your local environment uh, it will allow you to you know, get the updates for these app templates. So the advantages of using these app templates mainly uh, ease of use. So you know, once you have uh, them installed, it's uh, very easy to import them and launch the app template. So I will show you in the live demo. That, uh, Basically, uh, you just need to configure what is your input and what is your output. For example, if we are talking about the uh, JDB uh, database to HDFS, then I have to specify JDBC connection string required for the input and maybe what table name and uh, what is my username password for connecting to database and stuff like that. And on the output side, I will specify, uh, okay, what should be the directory on the HDFS and what should be the file name on the HDFS and such things. So once you configure them, it's uh, ready to launch. And at the same time, it's very easy to add business logic by adding custom operators. So we have a uh, the source code for these app templates available on GitHub. You can look at the source code. You can clone it and then you can modify the source code and add uh, you know, any operators from the Balai library or when you can define your own operators and add those operators into the DAC. And that will allow you to customize these applications to suit your requirements. So this will help you to uh, reduce uh, your time to market and total cost of ownership because now you are not developing applications from scratch. You have, you already have some app templates which is uh, working, uh, which is in working condition and you are just uh, trying to customize it to suit your requirement. And it also helps you uh, in the cost of uh, operations in production because the stuff like scalability, fault tolerance, state maintenance are taken care of by the platform. So uh, app developers doesn't have to worry about it. They don't have to spend their energy in the operational aspect of your big data application. They just concentrate on the functional requirement of the application. So 
as I said earlier, the functional aspect is uh, really the 20% of the task and 80% uh, is the operational aspect which we are trying to address through the platform. So uh, the value proposition is that uh, the, there will be significant reduction in the uh, overhead for handling the operational aspect of your application. And then for these app templates, you will get uh, real-time visualizations or uh, operational metrics such as uh, throughput or uh, latencies or number of tables processed and stuff like that. As well, you can define uh, the custom visualizations. Uh, and uh, so basically, let's say if you're copying file, you can define a variable for number of files processed and you can annotate that variable uh, saying that I want to see that variable in the dashboard, make available, make this variable available for dashboard. So the application master will gather the information about that variable periodically and it will uh, aggregate that information and serve the dashboards for that particular variable. So any questions still now? Okay, so let's uh, move further. So, datatorrent.com slash Apple is the link which you can navigate to for looking at the application templates that are available at right now. And uh, for source code of these app templates, you can refer to github.com uh, under data torrent handle. There is a repository called uh, app templates. And this repository also is uh, open sourced under Apache, so you are free to fork this repository, clone this repository, and do the custom modifications and uh, bundle the applications with your software. Let's move on to database to HDFS app template. So by the application, when we define the application in uh, Apache Apex, we need to provide uh, information about the directed per cyclic graph for that particular application. In this case, we have a app template which is reading from database and writing to HDFS. So my tag looks like uh, something like this. So I have uh, one operator which is uh, reading from uh, database which I'm calling it as uh, JDBC Polar. The next operator is uh, formatted. So JDBC Polar will output uh, something uh, like uh, object. So let's say if my uh, table in database has uh, three columns saying uh, customer ID and uh, transaction ID and amount, the JDBC polar will emit uh, Java objects or Pojos which has three fields, the customer ID, transaction ID and amount. And then the formatter will convert these objects into a string. So it could be, let's say, comma separated string or JSON. And then we are writing these streams, strings to file output. So file output uh, you can use to write it to HDFS. So let's uh, quickly look at the source code for this particular application. So we are referring to uh, database to HDFS. So that dot add operator is for adding nodes to your directed cyclic graph. 
So we have first operator which is uh, JDBC polar. The next operator is uh, CSV formatter. And the next operator is uh, file output. So these three lines are for setting the store for this operator. And then we are connecting these operators with streams. So these two lines are for connecting ATS in the word access. And then we are defining something for the partitioning. So we are saying that uh, the formatter should be have a parallel partition, which means that uh, for each instance of the upstream operator, which is uh, JDBC input, I need one instance of the downstream operator, which is uh, formatted in this case. And again, we are repeating the same for file output. So if my uh, JDBC polar has uh, five partitions, we expect that uh, the formatter and file output will also have five partitions. So I don't want to go deep into the code walkthrough for this application, but uh, uh, this uh, code walkthrough and uh, how to customize this application is covered uh, in the video, uh, in the separate video, and uh, the link for those videos are available on the uh, page in the app hub for this particular app template. So you can go to any app template, you will see uh, videos. The videos uh, will help you to, you know, then the launch the application in your local environment and uh, help you to guide through the steps for customizing the application to suit your needs. So let's look at the live demo. So I have a data Roland RTS installed on my machine. And you know, if we go to app hub and we say database, you will see some app templates which are related to database. So right now we are focusing on database to HDFS app template. And I have already imported this app template on my machine. So it is shown under the developed app. So let's uh, try to launch this uh, application. So it opens up a launch dialog box. So here we need to specify the application name. So by default, it's uh, database to HDFS uh, sync. You can change this uh, application name, but uh, the requirement is that it should not conflict with the already running applications. So uh, for uh, using the saved configuration, this uh, app template comes with uh, two predefined uh, configurations. One is a cluster memory configuration and other is sandbox memory configuration. So cluster memory configuration is uh, mainly suitable for uh, medium to large size clusters. And uh, sandbox memory configuration can be used for uh, single node Hadoop installations and uh, or uh, data torrent RTS uh, sandbox edition. So if you go to downloads page on the uh, datatorrent.com, we'll get uh, sandbox edition uh, available, and uh, which is nothing but uh, virtual box image. And there you will get, uh, um, I think, uh, Ubuntu installation, and uh, Hadoop installed on top of it, and uh, data torrent RTS installed on top of it. So that is available as a single image. So for now, I will select the uh, cluster memory configuration. And then uh, we'll specify custom properties. So let's expand the properties editor by clicking on the add default properties. So yeah, these are the properties required by this particular application. 
So basically we need to specify the driver for uh, JDBC. So in my case it's a Postgres SQL driver. So uh, the Postgres driver is uh, shipped along with the app template as a dependency but uh, you can as well try it on MySQL but uh, that dependency is not bundled in the app template because of uh, licensing issues but uh, you know if you have a MySQL driver jar available in your local environment you can use uh, that jar and put it on the class path and try this app template with MySQL as well. So database URL is a JDBC connection string so I'm specifying the server name, port and the database to connect to and then username and password for connecting to this database and then which table to read from and then if you have some where condition for filtering specific rules from this table you can specify that if you be put blank it will select all rules from this table and uh, next two properties are for output side so mainly the file path which is uh, the HDFS directory to write data to and uh, file name so I have uh, some predefined values for this so I will be using uh, node 35 as my database server and I will be using uh, user app user output directory and uh, this is the file name So let's uh, launch this application. Uh, we got the notification saying that the uh, application has been successfully launched. So if we click on the application ID, it navigates to the application details page. We can see the five instances for JDBC folder, formatter, and file output. We can see some uh, metrics chart shown over here, and we can see that uh, the operators have started uh, emitting the records, and we can see the single digit uh, millisecond latencies by each operator. So if we navigate to the physical tab, it shows uh, information for container. So containers in this case are the con YARN containers or in other words they are just the uh, JVM instances. So don't get confused uh, with the container word which is now very commonly used for containers like Docker. So this is not the Docker container, but the JVM container. And if we click on the container link, there is a feature available to monitor the logs for that particular container. So if there are any errors, exceptions, you can look at the log files. And yeah, one more thing. So if there are any exceptions, your application won't start, uh, won't stop working. What engine will do is, uh, you know, it will redeploy that operator on some other node and it will start from the last checkpointed state and continue the application from the last checkpointed state. So fault tolerance is taken care of by the platform. Application developer doesn't have to write single code for that. So uh, 
this is uh, about uh, visualize uh, the app template as such. Let's look at the visualizations. So we can see some uh, metrics shown on the charts, and uh, we can configure uh, like if there is too much information on the single chart. We can configure what all things we want to see. So let's say I will. Uh, So this this is showing uh, this is the operator state for JDBC polar operator. So let's say we are considering tuples uh, processed and uh, maybe failure form total tuple solidity. We can save this output. So there is uh, also work in progress for uh, adding the custom uh, matrix. So as I said, uh, you can define individual variables uh, in your Java operator and annotate them uh, using a special annotation called uh, matrix, and that will be available on the dashboard. I will just uh, give it a try and see if uh, it works fine. But this is a uh, work in progress, so yeah, and no luck. So uh, I'm unable to showcase that right now, but uh, yeah, it will come definitely a uh, few months down the line. Yeah, so this was about the live demo. Let's move on to the roadmap for the future work plan for the app template. So mainly we will work on the visualization part. So uh, basically improving these uh, widgets on the app, app data. So we can see the metrics such as the data mode or lines per files or number of figures and stuff like that. And as well, uh, we will be able to see the custom user defined metrics. And we are also working on the schema enablement. So right now these app templates are based on some uh, specific schema which is defined inside the app template code. But uh, we want that to be exposed to the user. So uh, user doesn't have to uh, compile uh, the app template code just to change the schema. So that work is uh, in the progress. And uh, we are also trying to integrate this with uh, uh, cloud infrastructures like uh, Amazon EMR or EC2 and uh, Microsoft Azure. So yeah, our uh, Apache Apache platform uh, works seamlessly on um, EC2 as well as uh, Azure. But these app templates, we need to, you know, uh, try tie them on the EC2 and Azure and uh, have some testing around it and then we can say that okay this has been certified uh, to work on those uh, clouds. And then we have uh, observed few more uh, templates uh, which are uh, also frequent uh, used patterns so we have uh, seen use cases involving uh, Reading data from FTP or SFTP, and you know Amazon Kinesis, and uh, you know writing to shows like uh, S3 or Redshift, and uh, this will be um, covered when we do the Amazon integration in depth, and uh, we will also work on uh, some app templates which will have uh, you know end-to-end -end, uh, scenario like. Uh, reading from Kafka and passing the records and doing some custom filtering and then some transformation and then writing to his data. So that's all from my side. Uh, if you have any questions, you can just uh, type in your questions in the questions panel and we will be happy to answer your questions. 
and uh, if your questions are very specific uh, feel free to write them on our mailing lists so if you have questions regarding uh, Apache Apex platform then you can uh, look at the apex.apache.org website and you will get a link for the mailing list on the community tab on that uh, web page so basically we have two mailing lists one is for uh, developers which is live at uh, apex.apache.org uh, and the uh, other is for users which is uh, users at uh, apex.apache.org and if you have questions uh, which are uh, more targeted for the data torrent RTS or the app templates you can write them on the Google group which is uh, data users at uh, googlegroups.com or uh, you can look at the forum discussion of the same Google group on the link given on this slide. Yeah, so uh, are there any major questions as of now? Okay, so feel free to type in your questions. So in, in the meantime, I will explain about the uh, resources uh, about uh, Apache Apex and data Torrent. So this is the link for the Apache Apex uh, project. And then uh, to subscribe to our forums, you can go through either the Apex channel or if you have questions about data torrent RTS or app template, you can refer to this link. If you want to download data torrent RTS, you can refer to this link. And uh, to get more updates about uh, events or uh, announcements regarding Apache Apex and data torrent, you can follow our Twitter handlers. And, uh, you can join our meetup groups and you will get to know about upcoming webinars and events happening in your locality. And the videos for all the webinars in the past have been uploaded on YouTube. So YouTube videos and the slide shares are the very useful resources for learning more about Data Torrent and Apache Apex platform. So if you are a newcomer on this uh, webinar series, I will highly recommend you to go through these two links to read more about this platform. Especially, we get many questions about uh, you know, comparing with uh, Spark or comparison with Storm. And we already have uh, you know, in-depth uh, webinar material um, in these videos and slides uh, which have been done in the past. So you can refer to those slides and videos uh, for more information about it. And yeah, so we have a startup accelerator program in which we give full featured uh, enterprise license for startups. So you can go through this link uh, if you are interested in um, startup accelerator sign up. And finally, the link for the app. -up. So you can look at the datatorrent.com slash app. Lastly, I wanted to mention that uh, datatorrent is uh, actively hiring. So right now we have open positions for uh, backend developers and uh, architects for big data and uh, QA automation developers and uh, information developers or the documentation team and the uh, build and release team and uh, community leaders and uh, yeah so if your profile is uh, not listed over there you are free to uh, send your resume to um, datatorrent.com and we will get back to you if we have uh, any suitable positions opened uh, in near future Thanks a lot. Thanks for your time. And uh, we will wait for a few minutes uh, if you have uh, any more questions. And you can just type in your questions uh, in the question panel and we will be happy to answer them.